It doesn't, doesn't pop. It doesn't yeah. pop anymore. Everybody bums me out with that song. Okay. He had a deal with Adeline on shaving, and even though she didn't fully uphold her end, she kind of did. She tried. So, I don't know what face he's making right now, Peter. I, I don't, don't know. know what all that is. But it, does, it doesn't even matter. I mean, like, I shaved, and she's like, eh. Well, he has a couple still, so. Mm-hmm. He can't be kissing on anybody anyway. Yeah. She doesn't like kissing him when he's all scruffy. Oh, it's going to happen to him from the back. Yeah. Anyway, um, so we talked a lot about Ula. Uh, we obviously went to Ula Palooza a week ago. It's kind of taken us this long just to kind of put our thoughts into categories and kind of go back and look at the things we did in Ula Palooza and things we would do differently. Mm-hmm. Of course, my fridge makes randomly loud noises while we do videos. That's Awesome. Make it nice. Anyway, um, so we just kind of wanted to hop on and talk a little bit about what ULA really is. Um, so first of all, if if you look at their definition of ULA, it's literally the state of being awesome. It's finding the book that that really started it was the ULA Find Balance in an Unbalanced World, um, and they're coming out with an ULA for women. Um, but it really is about that. It's about balancing the areas of your life so that you can have an awesome life. Yeah. Um, it's not about, you know, a get rich quick or about, you know, do this for a month and then you're going to be fit and healthy. It's, it's about your lifestyle and the things that you're doing um, and things you can be doing to find balance. And so um, there are two writers of it. Uh, They're both chiropractors, uh, Dr. Dave and Dr. Troy. Um, Dr. Dave actually interned for Dr. Troy, and that's how they met. And then after he graduated, Dr. Troy took him to Vegas, and he was all excited. You know, my my mentor's taking me to Vegas. This is going to be awesome. And he took him there, and him, um, those two and two other guys, then spent the next three days in Vegas um, working on their goals, where where they've been, uh, where they are now, and where they want to be, and then how to get there. And um, it worked for a long time. And um, Dr. Dave had a lot of success. And then Dr. Troy moved away. And um, I mean, I won't try to retell the whole story, but Dr. Dave had a series of things happen in his life, and he found himself back on the bottom. And when he was trying to figure out where it all went wrong, he found that he had lost a lot of the things that they had worked so hard on. So he called Dr. Troy, they met again, he started over, and then once he got his life back on track, they they wrote this book to help all of us um, kind of find our paths as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they basically, this is something that Dr. Troy... Mm -hmm. Um, usually live by. I mean, this is what he did. This is where, you know, one of his goals, his dream was to retire at age 40. And um, he missed his goal. He retired at age 42. 42. So 42 years old, he retired from chiropractic and basically had enough money to, oh, and welcome our cat to air. (laughs) Um, He made enough money to where he had enough residual to, you know, give money to his church and... For everything else, he had a beautiful, beautiful, he has a beautiful house in, in Arizona. Um, he has a, a lake house in Minnesota. I mean, he... We don't need to talk for yeah. 20 minutes about but, his life. Yeah, but I'm saying... Look him he, up. Yeah, he made a plan. We both follow him. He used this, and he started spreading it out to his friends, Troy being one of them. Um, Dave. Dave being one of them, sorry. Um, and then, basically, they made this book together, so it's pretty awesome. And and it's balanced between seven Fs and... Uh, uh, Basically, what they're stating is, is if you, you know, look at your life and focus on these seven categories and make sure there's a balance between the three, you will find your balance. Between the seven. Between the seven. You said between the three. Whatever. Between the seven. Yeah. Between the th- the three and then the other four at the same time. So, um, they 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 call them the seven apps. It's it's field, it's friends, fun, fitness, finance, faith, and family are the seven apps that they're talking about. Field would be. You know your profession. What what well, what makes you money? Uh, it, we're not going to sit there and say that it's the job you're at today. It's it's whatever your you know the area is that that brings in the income. You know, friends is pretty 
self-explanatory. self-explanatory like many of these are. Friends is friends. It's, it's, it's the people that aren't family. And then there's family, which is the people that are family. You know, <laughs> it's the people you take care of. They're, they do separate the two. There's fun, which is the activities or the things that you do that, that really you enjoy on a daily basis. Um, fitness, you know, staying healthy, staying active. Um, finance, which is, you know. The actual money. Yeah, taking that income money that you get and, and, and making sure that you're using it wisely. And then faith. Obviously, um, their focus isn't, uh, it's whatever your faith is. They but, don't, they don't, the, uh, sorry, not to interrupt, yeah. but they don't, they admit, and they will tell you that theirs is based on a Christian faith for them. Mm -hmm. Um, but they are not telling you what to believe. The section on faith is more about realizing that there's something bigger than you. It's really about, it. it's not all about you. I mean, the section on faith is really just more a reminder. It's not all about you. He looks very confused. No, no, it's, 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 it's the no beard. I, I look less confused okay. with the beard. Well, um, you're, you're gawking at yourself. Oh, uh, I wasn't okay. looking at myself. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, what they say uh, about faith is God, designed us for bigger and better things. I don't remember the exact phrase off the top of my head. All of a sudden, I do it all the time. And, but that's what it is. God designed us to be... A billion times. I'm sure it is. It's God designed us to, to do bigger and better things than, than what we do on a daily basis. So that's really the focus that they, they do, and it's pretty exciting. Um, when you really start listening to them talk, and they are inspirational. They're not motivational. They're inspirational. So, so yeah. Um, you know, and one of the things that they do talk about, which... I will transfer over to Amy on this, is goal setting. Um, it's really about dreams versus goals. Um, obviously, it's great to to have dreams. Um, you know, they have you write down your dreams. Um, so I'll just pull up as an example. Um, like for my ULA finance dream, my dream is complete financial freedom. Now, the problem with dreams, though, is it's very broad. That's going to look differently for everybody. Um, no two people view financial freedom the same way. Somebody that lives on $10,000 a month, um, you know, is not going to find financial freedom in the same amount as somebody that lives off of $5,000 a month. It just, it's not possible. Um, like, uh, for my ULA faith, all parts of my life God-centered. Well, how does that look? What does that break that down to? So they have you write down for each of the Fs what your dream is. If, you know, if this were a perfect world, everything were perfect, what, what would that dream be? And it doesn't have to be specific, but write it down. And then you go into your goals. And your goals should keep your dreams in mind. I mean, your goals are what make you tick. It's what gets you excited, gets you up in the morning. When when things are hard, because we all have bad days at work, we all have coworker drama or business drama, it doesn't matter if you're self-employed, it doesn't matter um, if you work for a company, if it's your dream job or a job that you go to literally because it gives you a paycheck. We all have days that are rough. So your dreams are what keep you going and help you Stay positive in those moments, but the important thing is then to break it down into very specific goals. Yeah, and the the mind the how they talk about it is they want you to use the the, the smart approach on um, on setting your goals. And uh, smart is an acronym. Um, the S in smart stands for spe specific. Be specific on your goals. Make sure it is you know you're not you know casting a wide net when you're making when you're placing these goals. Make sure that you are, you know, it's something that is tangible that you want. Uh, the next one's measurable. Don't just, you know, say in friends, I want friends. It has to be something that you can actually look at as a goal and you can set steps in to get there. You know, accountable. Make sure that you are holding yourself accountable and that you have people around you that can hold yourself accountable to your goals because you won't reach them. if You won't reach your goals if you, you know, put them aside. And accountability is really important in that realistic you know don't set goals that um are just way out of reach where you'll never you know they're you know where they're just almost nearly impossible to get make sure that your goals are realistic so you can actually attain them and then time set dates on them and they're very strict on this when we were writing the goals in the ulaf clues in the university um you know they would come and tell you you know i remember when i was talking about my goals and he stopped and said you need to put a date on that goal when are you going to get this completed by 
you know, you have to put that date so you can set, so you can hold yourself accountable to that. So you can ha make sure it's measurable. All those things, they all tie in together. The smart approach is very basic and it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I mean, to go along with that, I mean, they were very, very good about helping us set those goals. And we've already looked at them and some of them we've realized we need to tweak because you know, you kind of get in that mindset of everything's going to be perfect. But mm -hmm. like one thing I, um, you know, my dream is to be, um, for fitness is to, to be tone and in shape and able to, um, to kind of go with the flow on things. Well, that's a great dream. Um, but one of my specific goals is I signed up to run a mile in June. I don't run. <laughs> so, but then what you do with that is you then break it into milestones. So, okay, so I set this goal to run a mile by June. So I need a one week milestone because I set this goal. I'm gonna run the mile in June of this year. So I need a one week. What am I gonna do this week to help me? So this week, I would like to go jogging half a mile. That's what I have for this week. I know that sounds so sad that I have to put that as a goal, but Honestly, it almost killed me just walking up and down the street, well, jogging up and down the street with Adeline, and she want, she set a goal of learning to ride her bike. We are trying to teach our kids this as well. She set a goal that she wants to ride her bike without training wheels by the end of, of the summer. So we're trying to help her with that, which means riding her bike more. So I had to jog next to her for part of the time, and it was hard for me. So jogging half a mile is my one week milestone. My one month milestone is to jog a mile. Yes, I want to run, do the mile run in June, but to be able to run it in, I didn't set a specific time for myself because I just want to feel like I can run it in a way that makes me proud. Um, I did this a couple of years ago and I, I ended up with strep throat the week before and I think I ran it in just over nine miles, which I was like, woohoo. Oh, nine minutes, whatever. You know what I mean. Um, I was so excited. I was second from last. <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't care about being first because those people laughed me almost twice. Um, but by jogging a mile within the next month, that means I'm jogging consistently. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to get better and better. So the, that's just, that's kind of how the milestones work. For every goal that you set, um, you, you use the SMART method, so it's specific, it's measurable, you're accountable to it, it's realistic, and you have a set date. You look at it, and what's your one week? So if your goal is to quit drinking coffee, okay, so this week I'm going to see what items I need around me, whether it be Excedrin migraine or whatever, what items I need to quit. That's not one of my goals. So I'm just using it as an example. Um, but that may be your one week milestone is just to set that date that this is the day I'm going to stop drinking coffee. It, it can be that easy. So the milestones are just to keep you on track um, because this is such a visual thing. Yeah, and, and it keeps you visual. And having those one week milestones, one month milestones, it helps you, you know, because once you hit those milestones, you know, if you hit your one week milestone, it motivates you on the next one. And then it'll mm -hmm. motivate you on the next one. And if you, map out your if you're doing making it specific and measurable and realistic you know you can hit those you know if you plan your one week milestones correctly you know the, the, those goals you'll hit that one month no problem and then you're setting yourself up for the next month and the next and the next month and next month and then all of a sudden your year and the next thing you know you know let's say your dream is to run a marathon let's mm -hmm. say your, your your goal That's is is, is yeah, your, your goal is to run a mile you know but your dream is to run a marathon well, you know, let's say you, you prepare yourself for that marathon or for that mile, and then all of a sudden you realize that you're killing it, and then your next goal is two and three and four, and that dream you thought you could never reach, you know, you're running half a marathon, you know, in a year, and it's attainable. You know, there are many testimonials from this, people that are completely out of shape that are on triathlons, you know, using this method. So it's effective, and it works. And, uh, you know, so that's part of our thing. Um, you know, there is... The next part of this is what they call the accelerators and the blockers. There are things that you do day to day. There are things that you are that ingrained in you that help you accelerate your goals, help you retain your goals, and there are things that you do day to day 
that block your goals, that prevent your goals from happening. Um, so I'm quickly gonna go over the accelerators um, very briefly. Um, like I said, in the university, we spent a lot of time on these. Uh, we are not because we don't wanna you know, be on here for 10 hours, um, longer than that maybe. Yeah. So, so we'll, I'll quickly talk about, <clears throat> about um, the accelerators. Um, one of them is gratitude. Gratitude is, you know, I think these are, a lot of these are going to be straightforward, but um, being, you know, grateful and having gratitude for what you're doing and staying in a positive mindset. The next one's love. You know, I think love is self-explanatory. So mm -hmm. once I think you have any questions about that, please chime in. Um, discipline, obviously very important. If you, you know, if you are disciplined and you are focused on those items and you stay disciplined on your goals, you will attain them, you know, and that helps you keep you motivated, um, integrity, holding yourself accountable, you know, having Doing that integrity. You say you're gonna do. Yeah. If you say you're going to hit a goal, you know, it's, and this is all internal stuff. This is, this is, you're, you're looking at, at yourself on these things, you know, having integrity with yourself, making sure you're following through, having the passion that, you know, if these are really dreams and really goals you want, you will have the passion to get these completed. We all have passion to something. We all have a motivation to do something. Are you do, or do you have motivation on the right things? And you know, if you set your goals, if these are things you truly want, you'll have passion towards them. Humility, um, you know, staying humble throughout this is very important. I mean, it's you know, you have to you know not get too prideful when you when you're doing this stuff. You have to stay humble. You have to you know make sure that you're staying focused. And if you get prideful, you almost slow down. Um, and wisdom, being able to ask for help when you need it. You know, you don't have all the answers, and you never will. Um, you need to be able to um, understand when you're, you know, overwhelmed or, you know, you, you've gone too far and be able to ask for help when you need it. Because there's a lot of people, if you're doing all your ULA, you'll have friends, you'll have family that will be able to help you out. So. And, I mean, a few things on there, just a few notes um, before I go into the blockers. Uh, one thing we didn't talk about is when we wrote down our dreams and our goals, they always made us write down why. You know, why Why do you want financial freedom? Why do you, um, why do you want a God promotion? And it's not in a mean way, um, and it's not, it's supposed to be what, what's your truth, not in a judgmental way. Um, so I think that those accelerators really can help like your why really helps um, when you're working at that. But like humility, you know, we talked about that today even at church that, you know, humility is really when um, God is more important than you to you um, if you're looking at, you know, a faith-based humility. Um, but humility is just understanding that it, it's not all about you. And so that one really has stuck out to me because I think that I've always thought I was a humble person, but the more I look into what being humble really is, um, I have a lot of work, a lot of work to do in that area. Yeah, so. I, and I think we all don't want to really, when, mm -hmm. once you really start paying attention to it, and understanding what it is, and really reading about it, you know, and you know, you can you can see this stuff in other places besides Ula. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we talk about we've been talking a lot about Brene Brown lately, you know. She talks about the same kind of stuff. So, yeah. so yeah. Anyway, so um, just like there are things that can help push you towards your goals faster, which are the accelerators he just went over, there are things that can block you from your goals. There are things you need to be aware of because they happen to all of us. Um, but you just want to know that they're occurring so that you can stop it and get yourself on the right track. Mm -hmm. So most of these are really self-explanatory fear. Um and fear to me, the thing about fear to me isn't so much like if my goal is skydiving and I'm scared of heights, that's that's fear. Like, I get that. Um, but some people really are afraid of succeeding. And I think in some areas I am too. What does that really look like if I succeed in this finance goal that means I'm changing career paths? You know, my job's cozy and comfortable. I may complain about it sometimes, but I have set hours. Um, I know what's expected of me. Um, so fear can come out in that way too. Sometimes it is fear that you might succeed and you need to work through that. Um, guilt, which I mean, we've seen come up with him going to the gym more. Um, you know, it's surrounding yourself with people that are going to kind of help you through, through that guilt. Anger, 
which is one of my biggest ones. Um, it's easy to start blaming others when there's a hiccup. It's easy to, to point to a boss or a spouse or a friend or your kids or whatever. Um, but that's anger. Mm -hmm. uh, Self-sabotage, just outright, I, I can't do it because of whatever. Um, laziness, super self-explanatory. Envy. And envy isn't saying, oh, it would be, I, I can't believe they have that house. That's an amazing house. I love that house. I wish we had that house. That's not envy. That's actually, you have appreciation for what they have. Envy comes out, and this really struck me. Envy comes out when your desire to have it is so strong that you want them to not have it. It almost ties into anger. Like, you wish they would lose it. And that, and that's envy. And the thing is, is, jealousy and envy aren't the same thing either. You can mm -hmm. be jealous that you don't have something that, some, that someone else has, but you can use jealousy as a motivator for you to get there. Um, envy is more, I want to bring that person down to my level instead of raising yourself up to theirs. Yeah. You know? And, and you know, I know she's got a couple more to go over, but remember that they are talking about the seven blockers. It does not mean you have all seven. No. You know, we look at these lists, and I can tell you there are some that I have and some that I don't. You know, they said the same things. You know, they look at it and they were listing the ones they have and, and they were listing the ones that I really don't have a problem with this one. So, you know. And that may change over time. Yeah. Too. Um, and then the last one is focus. And um, focus in a good sense could be, and could be on the accelerator. However, this is talking about misdirected or lack of focus. Um, the way it's been explained to me, I don't remember exactly how they explained it, but I've had focus explained to me this way. When you're driving a car, you're looking ahead in the lane. You're kind of paying attention to what's around you, but your focus is what's in front of you and keeping your car in line. Mm -hmm. If you start to focus on the car that's over in the next lane or you start to focus on something on the shoulder, eventually your car is going to start to veer that way. So you have a misdirected focus because now all of a sudden you're trying to go this way, but you're going this way. And lack of, you know, this this would a good example of this in a physical, tangible way is your phone beeps while you're driving, you pick it up and you start checking your text messages. Yeah. You're no longer checking in front of you of you. You can crash in an instant. Um, that's a whole nother PSA that we could go over. But don't check Every, your yeah, everything that you're working for at that point could be gone in an instant because you're not paying attention to it. You're paying attention to the, the distraction, to what's on the radio, to the text message, to the phone call, um, to the kids screaming in the back seat. Whatever it is, your attention is no longer on your goal. Your attention is elsewhere, and you can lose all your focus um, in an instant. So those are those are your blocks. Yeah, and, and they did spend a lot of time on misdirected focus too, because what they talked about is misdirected focus could be, um, it's it could be focused on stuff that's detrimental to you. Um, they said you know addictions are a misdirected focus. Mm -hmm. You know you're putting all your effort into a drug addiction or alcohol or some obvious ones that they're talking about, but there's obviously all kinds of other addictions. They talked are, about social media addiction. Yeah, yeah. So you know. So there's a lot of one, a lot of a lot of focus that are not part of the seven apps that can really distract you from hitting your goals in those seven apps and you finding balance. So that's what they're really that's what they're talking about as well, you know. And that's what she was talking about, you know. It's social media will veer you off if you're focusing on some on one of your apps. So. Well, I mean, think about it. We've had this discussion um, because I have multiple examples of times where, you know, my kids are wanting to play a game or wanting me to read to them, but somebody just messaged me on Facebook, or somebody, you know, I have some notifications that I want to clear out, or somebody posted a video that I really want to watch. My kids are begging for my time, and I'm looking down, and I mean, that's, all of us have done it with something. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't even have to be social media, but at that point, my ULA family is out of balance because of something else, and there are times that I, I mean, we are surrounded by a lot of people that have uh, network marketing businesses. We fully support them, obviously. He has one himself. Um, you know, we have this page because of it. Um, but we, so we know that there are people that use social media as part of their work. And sometimes it is, you know, 
hey, sweetie, I need to work for half an hour, and then we're going to play a game. But that's where you need to have the integrity, that accelerator, that when half an hour is up, you put it down. Yep. And then you're going to be able to focus on your goal correctly instead of having the misdirected focus. Yeah. Anyway. And uh, one of the things that went, oh, went longer than I thought. Very fine. And one of your focus and one of the uh, methods they use to actually stay on task and with your goals is to write is to write your goals down, write your milestones down, and um, they say do it daily. Um, and what they recommend is every single night you take note cards like these. We have ours. Mine. Hopefully you can't That's see. That's hers. Um, so and you what you do is you know you you have twenty. I mean because they set us up for twenty one goals. You know three in each milestone. Or th- I'm sorry, three in each F, and um, but you don't have to have a goal a, a daily task for each one. You know they they said slim it down. Be realistic on how on your day to day. You know don't try and ignore one of your Fs at some at some point. You're gonna have to put effort into it, but be realistic. Write down a list of stuff to do. So that's what we do. We look at our goals every single night and we go, okay, what in my in our goals can we work on tomorrow, and how are we gonna work on them? You know. To hit my one-week goal, I have to do some of this stuff today. You know, so, I'm sorry, tomorrow. So I start writing that stuff down. I draw a line in the middle of my paper, as she does, and I put my ULA goals on one side. You know, um, And I write all the ones down that I, that I believe I can get done tomorrow. My goal is, is to complete that list. Granted, there are other things in our day-to-day that we have responsibilities for. I wrote those down on the other side of the line. I do and that's I do. our day-to-day items. You know, that's... Like grocery shopping, cleaning the house, doing laundry, doing dishes, you know, uh, just, you know, just whatever it is, you know, you have day to day stuff. So put it all in one thing, but do it the night before and then put it by your nightstand before you go to bed. So that when you when you wake up, your list is there. You're waking up with a plan. And if you wake up with a plan, then more likely you're going to complete that plan because that motivation begins the first second you look at it. You're going to wake up and you're going to set your day. Set your day with what you want, what you want out of it, and you've already dis- determined what you want out of, out of like we're gonna before we go to bed, we're gonna write Monday's plan out, which means when I wake up in the morning, I'm gonna have Monday's plan ready to go, and I'm gonna know what I'm gonna want to get done and how to get it done. You know, we're not perfect. We're not probably gonna get all of our goals done every day, which is fine. You just carry you it on the next. You want to pick about three to five things mm-hmm. that are towards your goals, and yeah. that's all you're trying to do each day. Um, you do want to be realistic with them. Um, but you also want to push yourself. I mean, you you should be putting focus on your law goals. But then there are things like, you know, setting a vet appointment. That's not a new law goal, so I put that on the other side. But um, it needs to be done. Yeah, it has to be done. Um, but it's not towards one of my goals. So I try to keep everything realistic, but three to five steps each day towards your goal your dreams basically it's how important are your goals to you well and, i mean oh, go ahead. i'm sorry uh I was, one of my goals today was going to the gym you know um gym closes at seven based off of when i looked at it at one o'clock you know after we got out of church and pick up the girls I, I i realized that for me to hit my goals i could either hit that one or complete three other ones and my decision was what was best for me was to take that goal and slide that one over to Monday and just double up my gym tomorrow because it's more it's more realistic for me to hit the gym extra long tomorrow than to hit it all today and that's perfectly fine mm-hmm. you know I made that decision I own it it's my responsibility it's my goals I the, I, I made I set that plan and rearranged it and there's no rules saying you can't do that don't feel like if you don't hit a goal you're gonna you know your He's days ruined excuses that's no. a block. I'm not giving excuses. I'm saying it's okay. Hold yourself accountable. Own it. Own up to it. And but then don't just cross me out and say I'm not going to hit it today. You need to if you're going to cross it out, make a plan on how on what you're going to do to make up for it. It's fine. Okay. You know, as long as you have that accountability and reset it. Okay, keep moving. Go ahead. Sorry, you're starting to get long in one area. You've talked for a lot of minutes about why it's okay not to hit your goals. I don't see it. Hit clock. your goals. Hit your it. goals. I don't know how long we've been talking for. Long time. Uh, hit your goals. Anywho, um, so part of the writing it down, we have the same things yeah, because we worked on the same things today. Um, <laughs> part of this is getting your full self involved because all of us have done that plan of this year I'm gonna lose weight, this year I'm gonna quit drinking coffee, this year I'm gonna, you know, quit smoking, this year I'm gonna, um, 
you know, really just hang out with my friends, whatever. Uh, we've all had goals that we've just kind of said and they float up in the air and float away. So part of what they want to do is get your mind going and get it put in there to where it becomes like upsetting to you if you're not doing it. And part of that is writing it down. When you write down things down, there's a reason you took notes in high school and college and all that. You took notes because you heard it, you wrote it down, you went back and you kind of like reorganized your notes. That was, in, you know, impressing it in more. Okay, so another way, visually, you want to see it. So there are actually seven bands. We're both wearing uh, family and faith today, but there are seven bands to go with the seven Fs. They each have a positive affirmation that goes along with the goal, and it is a visual reminder to which goals you are working on today. I'm not wearing all seven. Today was a faith day for us. Um, and a family day. Yeah. And Saturdays and Sundays, Jarrett and I really put focus on our faith. Mm -hmm. we, we really, I mean, we obviously talk about our faith throughout the week. Um, we have Bible studies we attend throughout the week. We study with each other. We pray with the girls. We have discussions. But it is concentrated focus where we are giving sacrificially of our time, our energy. We are setting aside not just random conversation, but for this hour, we're going to work on whatever. Yesterday, we worked on um, studying Malachi chapter 2 because that was what the sermon was over today. So today, making sure we made it to church, but not just that, making sure we had our debriefing with each other, which is what we call it. Well, he, he really wants to talk. Well, I was going to say. He's coming to I was just going to point out that normally we don't have the same wristbands on. No, usually we don't. Um, usually, like, during the week I have field and finance on a lot, um, and I've worn fun a couple days. <laughs> I need to wear fun more often. I'm not a very fun person, apparently. But anyway, so there's affirmation. I am grateful, humble, and fully connected. So there's affirmation. Um, and then Sunday is also a family day for us, making sure that we spend some time, quality time with each other and with the kids. Um, which is why this video started so late because we were sitting here chit chatting with Ava and so we weren't going to rush her off to bed. And it is, I am unconditionally loving, patient, and respectful, which is how we want to be with our family. But it's a visual reminder. We can, we can read it. We see the colors. So when I'm like, no, I, you know, I'm just gonna, you know, like he said how he did have the gym on here. When he looked at it, he was like, but then the two focus areas are going to get missed. So um, it's that visual reminder as well. And so then I'm sure that because you guys are on this healthy living through essential oils page, you're going, okay, what does this have to do with everything else we talk about? And it does. Uh, three years ago, they wrote this book a while back. I mean, I it know. It was in 2013, I believe. Yeah, so they wrote this book four That's years ago. Published. Is when it, yeah, so when it was published, but Young Living didn't get on board with them right away. In fact, um, the uh, it's just like two years ago. Gary Young, who is the founder of Young Living, um, his wife found this book, was reading this book, actually read it to him while they were on a road trip, and they fell in love with it. So they instantly, when they got done, they want they reached out to the Ula guys and said they want to incorporate this into Young Living because because this balance. This finding balance in a balanced world is the same mindset that Gary Young has with the essential oils. Finding that balance, finding you know ways to naturally, you know, support your body to find balance in all of this mess that we mm -hmm. call Earth. So um, they reached out to them and they actually created a, a, a Young Living line, a couple lines um, yeah. to At first it was yeah to a couple of Young Living lines to um, to help your body and to get through all this stuff. So. Um, you know, one of the they have what's called the Infuse Seven Kit, which is right here, um, or even the box. Even has a bigger picture. Ooh, pretty. Um, it actually has an oil for each for each one of the apps. Um, so there's a Finance Friends Fitness, Faith, Family, Field, and Fun oil. Each one supports it in certain ways, and if you do use them while you're doing those those items, you'd be surprised how well it works. They um, they all smell great. They all, some will motivate you in certain ways, some, you know, ground you in certain ways. It's, we, we highly recommend all those oils. But they weren't the first set that, that, that came out. 
for young Ling, this is a kit. You can only get these in the kit of seven. But there are two no, other... No, you can get those all separated. You can't get them separated on them? Okay. You I can get them all separated, but it's a lot cheaper to get them as a kit. It's a lot. It is cheaper. Most of the kits are that way. In fact, all the kits are that way. It's yeah. cheaper as a kit. But there was two other oils that they came out with first. So um, yeah. So the first two that they came out with uh, when they first hit up Dr. Dave and Dr. Troy and were like, okay, well, we want to... We want to create some oils because we think this is a thing would be great for our members. We want to incorporate it. We want to work together. So the first thing, the first two blends that uh, Gary Young created were Ula Balance and Ula Grow. Um, because those are really the two areas that you're trying to work on. You're trying to balance the seven areas of your life. And then you're trying to grow in all seven of those areas, which is our two uh, people create words, I guess. I didn't know this was a thing until late last year that you, you set a word that's your word for the year, whether it be health or whatever. We chose grow, um, so it worked out well for mm -hmm. us. But the thing about the oils, just like the wristbands are a visual reminder, the oils, part of it too, is it's getting another sense involved because... The olfactory system connects directly to your brain, most specifically to your limbic system, but it can't it, it gets your brain engaged. So it it's a sensory experience. It now you have, you know, you have your thoughts, you have your vision, you have your your sense of smell involved, you know, you can touch it, you can touch the oil, you can touch this. And there's no really right or wrong way to use them. You can just take a drop of balance because you've realized that for the past week you've you've worked 12 hours a day and you haven't had any fun and you haven't spent time with your family and you haven't dug into your faith or called that friend that's you know been needing things so you need some balance so you know put a drop on put whatever other wristbands on that you want smell it put it in the diffuser whatever you'd like to do um, grow, I like diffusing when I'm working on things. So grow is my like powerhouse. Like I diffuse it when I'm uh, paying bills, things that I need my brain engaged and alert for. And it kind of helps pump me up to do it. So I love the smell of grow. Um, my daughter scanned for balance, which oh, after, Adeline. yeah, Adeline. it was Adeline. So it smells so good though. Um, anyway, I had to sniff it. Sorry. Um, but I like diffusing grow. Yeah, there are great smelling ones. The, it, the whole wine is really good. Um, so these are a good place to start if you're not wanting to do a full kit, um, just to get another sense involved. And like I said, you can do Ula separate from Young Living completely. You really can. Um, it is separate. Other companies use it. Other companies have incorporated it. Um, there are hundreds of thousands of followers um, for Dr. Dave and Dr. Troy and Ula, uh, O-O-L-A. You can type it in. They have their own page. Only about half, they said, are members of Young Living yeah. that follow their page. So it, it's definitely, it. the oils tie in, obviously, to this, but the Ula itself is not dependent on oils. Um, it just gets another sense involved, just like you can do it without the wristbands. Um, but the wristbands are just that visual reminder. Yeah, and I mean that's the thing. You you could do it with just getting the book. I mean, technically mm -hmm. speaking, you could. I recommend you know? Ula Palooza too. Yeah, but there's Ula Palooza, which is like the university. They have a, a Ula University kit. They have you know a starter kit that comes with the book and and the goal stickers and the affirmation bands. There's a lot of items that you can get to help you out. But technically speaking, you could do it with just the book. You know, there are, you know, but when you do the university, you know, you take what we are condensing in an, less than an hour um, and, you know, expanding out in a two-day thing, hearing it from them, breaking certain things down. Yeah, Ula Palooza was nine to five, two days in a row. Mm -hmm. And it got emotional. And uh, they explain stuff and they really make you dig in deep because... And they come around and help you. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's internal facing. I mean, you are looking at yourself. You are looking at what blocks you. You're looking at who you are and why you are that way and what you need to do to hit those goals. So it's, it's, it gets Yeah, it I mean, there's intense. so much to Ula that even with the book that we haven't even touched on in this hour. Yeah. I mean, there's, there, no there's things like the valve and the hub and things that we're not the even going to try to 
to go into um, in the time we have. We would love to get an accountability group together mm -hmm. if any of you are interested to, and we could, as a group, purchase the ULA University and go through it together and really dig into the book. So if you're interested in that, let us know. That would be separate from anything we do with Young Living. That would just be as acquaintances and friends and family on here. Yeah. We would love to. Yeah. We would love to create that. Um, we can create a private group and and set up that environment where that's we're yeah. all just holding each other accountable and we're all there for each other. But anyway, yeah, we, I you know, digress. We we would do the we would get the university. We'd love to do it. And I, it's we've talked about it. We talked about it literally at five oh five on the way out leaving Lula Palooza that we want to get the university, which is you know Lula Palooza in a in a in a box. So, so yeah, without them, obviously, they don't, they're not in the box, but. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Videos of them are. <laughs> now, ULA does have a 21-day ULA challenge. Coming up. Coming up through Young Living. And um, it's basically every single day they're going to, they would send you an email. Mm -hmm. They would send you information. It would be a goal for that day. The goal could be anything. We don't know what they are. We haven't started it yet. Um, it's from gonna... what I've seen on past challenges that they do, it would be things like, you know, uh, call a friend that um, has made a difference in your life and thank them. Mm -hmm. Stuff yeah. like that. It's 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 not going to be overly complicated stuff. It might be some things that might get you out of your comfort zone a little bit, but it's necessary stuff to push you and to get you into those into those apps that you don't touch. I mean, I you know it's really important that you hit all seven, and they're going to try and push you to hit those seven, whether. Um, it's comfortable or not. They uh, and uh, it's preferably. centered on being grateful. Yeah. and having faith. Yeah, have be grateful and have faith. You'll hear us say a lot, a lot. Hashtag grateful. Um, so yeah, uh, if you are a Young Living member, um, and you do the kit, they have uh, if and you uh, set up the and sign you, up and you sign time. up, um, they have this book half off. Um, they'll give you a code, an, uh, an online code for Amazon, which you can order the book there for half off. So it's a twenty five dollar book for twelve fifty. Um, also, if you're a Young Living member, you get 10% off the Infuse 7 kit. That saves you almost $20. You have this, to call in for that. Uh, on this kit, but you, like I said, you do have to call in let them know. So that will save you money there. And um, if you are a member of ours and you do, do decide to get that Infuse 7 kit, um, let us know and we will send you the affirmation bands. Mm -hmm. um, we will just send them to you. So, you know, we love the, we love the bands. We love Ula. We love the oil that, that, that go with it. So, you know, we want... We encourage you guys to take a look at it. Just take the time. It, this is an easy read. I read it. I mean, honestly. And the thing is, I mean, we literally, the day after, it was like two days later, and it's only been a week um, since Ula Palooza ended, we were already looking at how much does it cost to go to the Ula Palooza in, in Vegas, because uh, right now they have buy one, get one free on it, and it's $1,000. Um but it includes like a concert and it's even more intense. Um, the one here in Kansas City was three hundred dollars a ticket. They almost always have scholarships available, so if it comes to your area, I definitely recommend checking it out. You can look to see and the scholarships like here there were a hundred scholarships paid for, and they were paid for by um, Young Living Diamond members. Yeah. So, do I feel bad? that he makes money when people buy the oils now because I use the oils and I would regardless of if he sold them or not um, because we used them for a year before we actually signed up as distributors. So I, and I don't feel bad because I know where the money came from. Yeah. It was $300 a ticket and they bought a hundred tickets so that members, not even members of Young Living, but so people in Kansas City, it was open to anybody, not Young Living members, to anybody. Um, they they bought a hundred tickets just so people who couldn't afford to go could go. And that's and that's nationwide. I mean, people buy Everywhere. they people buy tickets and just and for Ula Palooza, just so other people can go. And it's not like I buy tickets so one of our friends can go. It's, it would be I buy a ticket and I let them know find someone. Yeah, I'm buy gonna someone. I'm gonna buy five tickets. Yeah. You give it to whoever you think needs it. Yeah. Um. So look into it, even if you don't think it's something you can afford. Um. The reason it's a little more expensive than other types of conferences. First of all, it's not just a motivational speech. You're not going to listen to somebody motivate you. You're going to work on your goals. You're going to. There's gonna be tears. I don't think a single person there didn't tear up at some point because it's 
hard to look at your whys sometimes. And it's hard to look at your blockers. And it's hard to face the reality of what really motivates you. Because everybody wants to say what motivates them is family and, and faith. And that's just not the truth for everybody. Um, it wasn't for me. And that's a hard reality. But it, it's necessary if you want to get where your goals are. Um, so there's laughter. There's tears. There's giveaways. There's fun. Um, there's a lot of things packed into that two days. So I recommend going because we can go through the book. We can go through the workbook that they gave us, but to be there, they they keep it small enough that they literally came around and not just signed our books, but signed it. Hey, you have my book. Whatever. Oh, we're almost out of battery. Um, sorry guys, let me just clear that. Uh, so we'll only be on here for a few more seconds. Um, but um, they keep it small so that they can go around and help you. They came around and and answered our questions one-on-one, -on -one, you know, kneeled down with us. They, they got in the mud with us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it and, was great. And they did. I, I would have to say they probably had a personal conversation with every single person there, um, including us. And we got to hug them. Yeah. I know well, what, I, I know what Dave's coffee budget is each month. We're not telling you. No. He told us in confidence. Not yeah. really. He told us because we told him ours and it was sad. Well, because he was like, it's a lot. You don't want to know. I'm pretty embarrassed by it. And I was so like, he told him ours. Yeah, we told him ours. And he's like, oh, okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. All right, guys. I know this was a lot of information. We've been on here about an hour. But you have to understand, we had 16 hours at Lulapalooza. Tried to condense it to an hour. Um, let us know if you're interested in an accountability group. Again, it would just be a chance for us all to dig in deep together, um, to be in the pit together. We are passionate about this, um, and, and we, we are won't motivated. just be throwing oils on you the whole time. No, we are we inspired, and, and in fact, if you guys don't want us, if you say, "Hey, we'd love to do this with you, but we don't want to talk about the oils," that's no. fine because that's not the purpose. No. We don't want to do this to try and get a sale. We're not doing this for the business. We're doing this because we believe in us. it, and we want to. We want to be outward facing with what we're learning. We're inward facing on the information, but outward facing because we want to share it. So yep. um, please let us know. Um, we want to help you learn what we learn. And and we want you guys to help us be accountable on our goals. And we want to help you be accountable on yours. So. All right. We're going to go watch Some Walking Dead now, I think. Yeah. All right. Speaking of, yeah, speaking of goals. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. All right. Thank you.